made it. Alright, I've already looked up my bib number. I am 1780 for the half marathon. Also mugs for this race too, which is kind of cool. I didn't know that. I'm probably gonna get a t-shirt too, I'm thinking. We're home from the expo. That was actually a really small expo, so there wasn't really a lot there. This is the t-shirt that came with the registration, so it's just this red shirt. I got a size small, although looking at the shirt, it's actually cut very small, so I probably should have gotten a medium, but that's okay. But yeah, this is what's on the back. And this shirt is actually cotton, which I wasn't expecting that because normally the shirts are like that tech material. And if I'd known it was cotton, I don't know if I would have bought this shirt. So this shirt was $42, but I do like this shirt. This shirt is super cute. And this is also a size small, it's like twice the size of this red shirt. We just have this cute little folded detail. Also with our registration, we all got a mug. So I didn't know that at all actually, but yeah, we all got this cute little mug. And this came in either red, like the inside was either red or this navy blue. And I picked the navy blue color. And of course, here's my bib, and I thought I got four safety pins, but I'm home now and I only have three safety pins. I've been looking all over the floor and I simply cannot find the fourth safety pin. So I'll have to figure that out <laughs> in the morning. But yeah, but I need to look up what order like the green corral is because I, I honestly just don't know. But yeah, but that's all that's all we got from the expo. So nothing too crazy this time. So we'll, we'll see you Sunday morning at the race. Right, Morocco? Okay. <laughs> Right. It's about 6.15 in the morning and we're going to be leaving for the racing. <laughs> Alright, it is 6.30 in the morning now and I'm just leaving my apartment. Uh, you can see behind me the sun is already starting to come up. I believe sunrise is like 6.54 this morning. So yeah, so today I'm running the Love Run Half Marathon. I actually registered for this race, believe it or not, back in like 2019. <laughs> it is 2023, so like four years later, I'm finally running this race. And that is just because, of course, I registered for March 2020. COVID hit, got deferred, you know, all that stuff. So here we are, finally running this race. I'm very excited to be running the Love Run Half Marathon. I'm really hoping to PR this morning, so that you know fast forward to me after the race <laughs> to see how well I actually do but my love would be 145 however I didn't even train for 145 so I would be shocked if I actually got 145 I trained probably I would say for maybe like 155 is what I'm saying so which is still pretty good and that's still about five minutes faster than my last half marathon which at this point I've been doing five minutes faster for like each half marathon I've done so I think somewhere in the 150s is definitely doable. But yeah, this race was so interesting because even when you look it up online to try to find like the corral order even, you can't find it. Like I'm in the green corral, but I don't know what order that is, honestly. So I guess I'll find out once I get down there. The race starts at 7.30 this morning and I live about a 10 minute walk, a 10 to 15 minute walk. According to my mother, it's 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> so I'm away from the starting line. So heading down there. And yeah, 7, 7.30 is when the race starts. I'm assuming I'll probably start a little bit after 7.30, but I can hear the little birdies this morning. All right, I'm gonna eat my Pop-Tart, which I meant to eat before I left. And um, honestly, I just brushed my teeth and left, and I was like, whoops, I was supposed to eat that, wasn't I? <laughs> so I am going to eat that now. <laughs> also, it's so pretty because all the flowers have been blooming here in Spring Garden, so. So pretty. Yeah, like this street, Green Street. So pretty. Look at this little cutie. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good morning to you too, young sir. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, have a good day, my love. 
This is the first race I've been to where there's no security. <laughs> So there's a bunch of vendors here, of course. You can really smell that bacon on a stick over there. Here are the corral groups. So orange is back here. It looks behind orange is silver. And then purple, yellow. I can see green up there. I'm gonna go see if who's in front of green. It looks like red, blue, then green. All right, it looks red, blue, Green, yellow, purple, orange, silver. <laughs> so I'm technically the third corral. I feel bad too because I told Teddy couldn't come with me because non runners aren't allowed in like, the starting area. But again, this is the chillest race I've seen. There's lots of people here. <laughs> I guess no one really cares. It's like 7 or 6 right now and they just started doing 12,000 runners from 42 states across this country. As the Angels going in 3, 2, I'm gonna check my official time, but... Oh. Alright, got a little slippery thing. So what? Thank you, thank you. Oh. My legs. <laughs> I've got a little bag of stuff here. Thank you, sir. I am home now from the race. I'm filming on cinematic mode on my phone, which I've never done before. So I guess we'll see how it goes. But yeah, but overall, I feel like the race went super well. So real quick, this is just gonna be a my love run half marathon race recap for everyone. So just kind of go over a little bit more tidbits. I did not film at all during the race as you would have seen. Normally when I'm actually running a race, I will take out my phone and like film a few clips as I'm actually running. This race, I chose not to do that because I really wanted to stay focused on my actual pace the whole time. And for the most part, I ran the same pace the entire race, which for me was eight minutes, 51 seconds. And I ran the race in one hour, 57 minutes and like a few seconds here or there, which is a PR for me. <laughs> so it was not necessarily PR that I was hoping to set. I was really hoping to get closer to 155. And I thought I was going to get 155 because at some point during the race, I ran past the 155 pacer, like the, the guy holding the little pace stick. And so because I ran past him, I thought that meant I would have been before 155, but alas, I was 157 and I'm com completely okay with that. So it was still under two hours, which was my overall goal in general. And it was still faster than when I ran the Atlantic City half marathon last year in May. So I'm still pretty proud of it overall. During the race, I did find the race to be a little bit tricky, especially in the beginning when you were facing the sun, like the sun was so bright. Luckily the weather was pretty good today. So I didn't really have too much trouble when I was actually running during the race, but because the sun was so bright, it's like I could not see at all. And I feel like a lot of other runners are having similar problems too when they were running that it was just like the sun was just so bright. It was just so wild. And they were just like looking at the floor or else like you would not have been able to see in front of you. So I'd say that was kind of tricky. I feel like overall miles one to five went by the fastest for sure. And that is when you're running really in like the heart of the actual city itself, like where you go through center city and stuff. So those miles, I feel like really flew by if I'm being honest. I was listening to a podcast during the time. So I was trying to focus on the podcast, try to keep pace. Obviously the beginning of the race is always a little bit easier than the end of the race. And the race does then like double itself back. So then we doubled itself back and then we went up to where the Gerard, Gerard Ave bridge is and you know, kind of go up the hill to cross the bridge. And then you cross over to MLK Drive, go through MLK Drive up and then back and then, you know, come back across Gerard Ave Bridge and then back down to Kelly Drive to finish right in front of the art museum. So that was something I actually didn't realize. It was that the finish line itself was like right in front of the art museum because when I did the Philadelphia half marathon and the Philadelphia marathon, the finish line is still on the actual road itself, like not in front of the museum, like around that circle. It's like a little bit more to the, um, like if you're facing museum, it's more to the right of the museum. So I wasn't expecting that. So that was pretty cool because I just didn't know that's what it was going to be when I was there, when I was running it. 
I would also mention too that this was the most relaxed race that I feel like I've ever done. Like, I guess relaxed city race because when I did the Empeñata 5K, that was for sure the most relaxed, most chill race I've ever done was the Empeñata 5K last year. And I feel like this is also one of those more relaxed races as well. And I say that for a few reasons. One, there was no security going into this race, which I was really surprised about. This was the first city race that I've done where there was no security. Like you, there was an app, you know, you just walked in, not even security guards, you know, uh, blocking the entrances to where the actual race was. So I was kind of surprised at that because Ted had actually asked me, who's my partner, he was originally going to walk with me to the starting line and wait with me down there. And I told him, I was like, oh, well, don't bother because only runners are only allowed in that starting area. This, again, not the case. Anyone could kind of be in that area. So people had their friends and family in that area with them before the race started. So again, just not something I was expecting because I haven't really seen that at a city race before. Of course, I've seen it at more local races. So I guess that's another thing to point out too. That I think this race is more of a local Philadelphia race. They did make announcements saying that there was 12,000 runners in this race this year, representing 42 states and nine countries. So there were lots of people from all over the country and the world running in this race, but I do still think the majority of the people running this race were from Philadelphia or from the surrounding Pennsylvania area. Just an opinion. I don't know if that's true or not. My cat's trying to play with her toy down there, so don't mind her. But yeah, but again, it was just a very chill atmosphere. There was no one checking corrals. And so again, I was the green corral, which was the third corral to go out. But even when you walked up to your corral, there was no one checking the corral. So it was complete on our system there. So if you wanted to be in an earlier corral to, again, try to be with a pacer and make a different time, you, you definitely could. No one would have said literally anything. So yeah, that was something different for me as well. There was also no announcements for the race until like 15 minutes before the race started, which is very strange. Like as I was walking to the starting line itself, I wasn't, normally I feel like you see a few people also walking to the starting line. I didn't see anyone basically until I got to the starting line and then everyone was kind of there. I also feel like too, a lot of people were coming from the other direction is what I've noticed, probably from like the subway. But I did think that was kind of interesting that again, it wasn't until I was basically there that I noticed that there was people for the race. Again, there was no announcements when I got to that starting area. It was just pretty quiet. Everyone was just kind of doing their own thing and then yeah 15 minutes before the guy came on the speaker and just started announcing some of the, the fun tidbits of the race and stuff so it was definitely a race where the race started at 7 30 you could probably show up at 7 20 if you really wanted to and just sneak it right into your corral and you would be fine i say that because in other races that i've done i have i filmed a lot of my races so if you want to go watch any of my other race recaps they're very casual i'm not you know a professional runner or athlete in any way i just run for fun honestly just for myself but in other races i have noticed that corrals can be a bit more strict where they have volunteers making sure you are in the right corral and then at a certain point before the race actually starts then they would have everyone line up and then make sure you're in the proper lines for each corral going back so again they didn't do that for this race it was just very relaxed in that sense Something else I would also note too is that for the finishing area, anyone could be in the finishing area. So when, because of COVID and you know various things, when I've done other races in Philadelphia, my parents and my family weren't always able to be right at the finish line when I was going to cross. So for this race, I could tell immediately just by the way it was starting, I was like, yeah, they'll for sure be able to be by the finish line. Otherwise I was going to have them meet me at another point along like the hill going up, you know, Kelly Drive. But in this case, I text them being like, just be at the finish line, I guess, because I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to get there. And I was right there, right to the right of the finish line for me, which is really great. I'm so sad I didn't actually see them. It's so hard when you're running because, you know, the crowd is so many people and you're trying to pick out like one person in the whole crowd. Plus you're running, you're running across the finish line. You know, it's a big moment, so to speak. So I didn't actually see them, but I did get some great photos though that my partner took. So I'll put those on the screen right now as I'm talking. So yes, yeah, so I'm still glad that they were able to be there and support me in the race. I have the medal right here. So... This is the 2023 Love Run medal. Let's see if that will focus in on it. Maybe if I put it in front of my face. Yes, yeah, so this is 2023 on it. And there's like a little bottle opener too at the top as well. There's nothing on the back. You can get it engraved with your time if you want. And then yeah, on, on the lanyard, it just says, you know, Love Run 2023 on it. So it's a pretty big medal, honestly, if I'm being honest. But it is a pretty nice marathon. I'm glad I got it. Again, I registered I registered for this race back in 2019 and I'm running it in 2023. So four years after I paid for this race, I'm finally running it, which is so funny. But again, you know, of course, because of COVID, deferring, you know, things going on in life, I just had to keep deferring it until now. So again, I'm really happy that I ran this race. I'm so glad I finally got to do it, especially when I'm still living so close to the, the start and finish line as well. So that's pretty convenient. It. Again, I'll put my times on the screen right now as well from the my RunKeeper app. Again, I kept pretty consistent times for the most part, I'm pretty sure. And when I finished, again, I think it said I was an 8.51 pace and one hour, 57 minutes was, was my overall time. So again, in the future, I definitely would love to run a faster half marathon. I really want to try to run in one hour, 45 minutes. And I wanted that to be this race. 
but I also knew too, I did not train properly for a one hour, 45 minute race this time. So I knew that going into the race, I was like, yeah, I definitely didn't train for one hour, 45 minutes, but I thought I was going to get 155, but again, two minutes slower, not the worst thing in the world. Two minutes is a long time in running world. But again, I'm not gonna beat myself over about it. I still got a PR. I still got the notification saying I ran faster than my last half marathon. So still pretty proud of that. And let me tell you, I'm still pretty sore. I can definitely feel my, my legs and my back just a little bit, but mainly my legs are definitely pretty sore. And I am for sure going to lose a toenail. That is also for sure as well. So yeah, but I had a great time running the Love Run Half Marathon. If you ran it, let me know how you did. If you're gonna run it in the future, good luck and everything. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. By the time this video goes live, it's gonna be so like later. My next race is that I'm running the Broad Street Run on April 30th here in Philadelphia. So that will probably be my next video after this one. So again, by the time you're watching this, Hope the summer's going well. <laughs> so, and again, a good uh, congratulations to all the other Love Run Half Marathoners out there. Also, thank you, of course, to all the volunteers and event coordinators to help put on the races. I had a really great, great time running the race. So, yeah, that's all for now, I guess. <laughs> so, I'll see you all soon. <laughs>